looking at it right now. It says starting recording. That has to mean it's recording, right? I hope so. <laughs> I, yeah. trust, I trust you, Alhafe. All right. Uh, okay. So um, before we get into the grand entrance of this show, uh, uh, just a word to the wise. This is Jesse and my second time recording this. This is one of the many Doom podcasts uh, when it comes to technology that I'm not very good at, nor is anybody else. So uh, we're actually technically recording this for the second time, but not to take too much away from the ambiance and the uh, the patina that is on this podcast. So in, in um, honor of last night's fuck up and today's redemption and the start of the NHL season... I've got Lord Stanley's mug. I've got me, uh, oh, here we go. The one and only Claws of Law. I'm going to pour into this mug. <laughs> and, you know, as heartbroken as I am about losing a podcast, because I love the, get round two here, authenticity of having uh, a live <laughs> podcast. It's very important to me. And I, I was heartbroken yesterday so there we go we got a lord stanley mug and then just to make sure i might say things on this podcast i didn't say on yesterday's podcast jesse if you could do some um description i'm gonna just do some pouring yeah this guy is loading up the stanley cup drink with smirnoff just on top because he's feeling that bad you know i want to i want to i want to make sure that this is an authentic podcast and i can't do that if, if i already know all the answers so let's get loosey goosey let's okay. tip this mug Let's do what we got to do. Jesse, you drinking anything over there? Yeah, Ryan Ginger once again, buddy. I'm going uh, Cheers. Nice. Cheers. You know, I wasn't going to tell anybody. You kind of called yourself out, man. I wasn't going to let anybody know. You know, and, and that would be the right thing to do. But I'm an honest guy. <laughs> yeah. And maybe. we don't fact check on this podcast. So whatever it is, it is. Here we yeah. go. One more, one more to what the whistle. Let's go. I'm loving this. Loving the heart. That's pure heart, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, Nana Nation and lovers of the Toronto Maple Leafs? I'm joined via technology with my homeboy, Ball Walker. What's up, baby? Hello, hello, El Jefe. Excited to talk Leafs. Let's get this going. Let's go, baby. All right. So as I said in the prelude, we did already record this, <clears> so I already know some of Jesse's answers, but you guys don't. So let's get into it. Jesse, what's, what's new on the roster that you like? Yeah, so... I guess we'll start off by saying what our comments were last season. If this team doesn't win a playoff series, it doesn't matter any of this. So with that being said, I wanted a couple of things from them. I wanted more leadership. I wanted more toughness, more size. And I think they did that because they brought in Wayne Simmons, Joe Thornton, Jimmy Vesey, a whole other host of big bodies. So they did what I asked. So I'm actually happy with what the Leafs have done and where they're going. I agree. I do like the addition of size, some grit, and the harder to play against. Like all the keywords that they had been saying, I enjoy it. Uh, and I also like, we'll talk about it later as well, but I also like the depth and goaltending that they have. <clears throat> Hutchinson's thing, I kind of badmouthed when we recorded Hockey Town a couple days ago. But I yeah. feel like it's still the right play because you the waiver wire just went through. The Leafs didn't really lose anybody, which is great news. Uh, but they have Hutch in case anything happens to Anderson. All those guys can move up and Hutch can still have a spot. I like the signing overall. And again, the one thing that we really need, which is depth, and the Leafs don't have any great anymore. They don't have any great goaltending prospects. So I'm on board for having Hutch there. Yeah. And it actually shows because two goaltenders were picked up off waivers. So great call with the uh, coaching and management decision to keep Dell up because he probably would have been claimed. So that helps to the depth that you're talking about with goaltending Hutchinson is Hutchinson. Um, he's going to be a good Marley's goaltender. And if something God forbid happens to Freddie Anderson, which means we're screwed, but mm -hmm. if something does, he, he can come in and win a couple games. I mean, it's not going to be a Vesa Toscola situation. So there's that. Right. Uh, Dell. You know, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I was just gonna say the, the guys also know him. So he, they're comfortable in the locker room. So yeah. I think that's an important thing. Sorry. What you're saying. No, no problem. So I think that's key. I definitely, we were talking last night that they would probably keep Dell in that third, like goalie position up. I don't know now. Maybe they send him down because some goalies have been claimed off waivers, 
But I kind of like what they did. And, and you're right about the young goaltending situation. I mean, Wall and I forget the other kid's name. Um, they haven't really, they're still young. I'm not going to say they haven't panned out, but there's not that excitement around them that there usually is with a young, exciting goalie prospect. We don't have that. So yeah. besides Freddie, I mean, Campbell is a great backup goaltender, but that's it. He's a great backup. You know, j- just looking back in the history of the Leafs, the Leafs haven't really, it's not since Felix Poffin, which was 25 years ago, 30 years ago, have they really had a goaltender that they brought up through the ranks and made them their own. And I don't, and I mean, they, they went, we went on like a, a hot streak of signing great goaltenders. You had the Cujo era, then you had the Belfour era, and then nothing really like a lot of flip flopping until they got to where they are now. I mean, you could probably, I think it's, it's like 15 goalies they went through from their last goalie that gave them a tenure like Anderson has. So I think for the Leafs, uh, not having a, a ready goal, goaltender in their, uh, minor affiliate i think this is a good call to stock up and have that depth oh 100 percent. i we're gonna get to it later with anderson's contract but i really don't know what the future is for this team goaltending wise and you're right i mean i can't blame them for the raycroft acquisition at the time he was rookie of the year yeah toskal i i was even excited about because behind nabokov he was actually a really sick backup goaltender and he just was absolute shit. And then it's been nothing. Freddie's been the best goalie since then. Um, yeah. I always and, have, yeah, I always have a buddy who never believed in Justin Pogi, even when we won the World Juniors. He said he, anybody could win with that team. Pogi is never going to work out, and he was right. So I kind of yeah. trust him with goalies. So I, I felt the same way when, when it came down to it, and they were going to trade either Rask or Pogi. I was, I always believed that. A European goal, a, a hot European goalie that comes off a World Juniors performance is going to be better than any Canadian goalie because the team is that much stronger in every fa- facet. So I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about that. So when when I I was with your buddy, was that me by any chance to mention that? <laughs> we'll say it is if, for the yeah. yeah thanks, it was appreciate hot. that. Yeah. All right. Any roster cuts that kind of shocked you? Uh, the one that's <laughs> funny enough upset my parents is. Uh... Angval being sent down or, or waived. Um, but but if you look at Sheldon Keefe's comments and the way he's played since we signed him to the contract, only one goal, deservedly so he's been waived. Why do you just get a spot? This is not the old Toronto Maple Leafs where you're just guaranteed a spot because you've been there. Like We haven't won a playoff series. I, I'm sorry. Get the fuck out if you're not going to play yep. well. We Something got the has depth. to change. Yeah, we got the depth now with all these veteran signings, these small contract signings. Like I said before, Vesey, we have brought Robertson up. We've got Barabanov, who actually looked sick in the blue and white game. I'm actually yeah. excited to see him. So Same. I'm glad you can pronounce his name, too, because I was just going to be like uh, <laughs> Bonarowski. No, I yeah, good name. enough. Um, man. And also, Lettinen was a big surprise for me. I knew there was yes. a lot of hype, but I never believed that hype, especially players crossing the Atlantic. I always feel like they need at least a, a season, but... The Leafs have done a really good job scouting out of the KHL. You know, like you look at um, Zaitsev a couple of years ago. He had one killer season. They gave him a great contract, and they were able to move that contract, which was fantastic. So I, I really think that um, – I can't remember the other name that they brought over from the K, but – oh, last year they didn't work out, actually. Shit, what's his tits? <laughs> Defense, de- defenseman. Fuck. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I can't even think of his name. Oh, now. oh uh, 92. Oh, Zagana. Oh, Zagana. Thank you. Yeah. 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 But regardless of the fact, I'm surprised that Lennon made the the lineup and I'm happy that he did because he was impressive in the blue and white game. So I'm on board for that. Yeah. I wish I knew their names and I knew them before, but kudos to the Leafs European scouting staff because they always find these guys, Uncle Leo or whoever it is. Like I always enjoy these European players they bring over. They always seem to work out at least for the year we bring them over, maybe not after. But kudos to those guys. They kill it. We don't we maybe don't do it so much on the North American side with our scouting so much, but right. we kill it with the European guys. You know, and, and just <laughs> as we're talking about like roster moves, um, are you shocked? News came out today, Leo Komarov sent down on waivers. Yeah. Um <laughs> so Mama Walk take, he should totally come back to Toronto on it. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, Thornton deal, even though he are, he still has a contract. I, I didn't want to explain that. But yeah, uh, good. <laughs> you know what? It is what it is. I mean, Lou brought him over the same reason Matt Martin. They wanted instant toughness, grit to that Islanders team. They were going to make a playoff push. And it's one of those where the contract's not working out for what he's providing. I'll always yeah. love Uncle Leo. I mean, that guy is for sure. 
he's a locker room guy. All the boys love him. So yeah. Plus if killer he, mustache. Yeah. Oh, I mean, if he, you know what, if he comes back when his contract's over and he comes back on the $700,000 contract, I'd let him try out for the team again, whether he makes it or not, whatever. It's all I mean, who, and out of the five guys who are on one year deals, you know, there's a good chance five aren't returning next year. I'd be shocked if two returned out of the five. So I think we're going to be know. one of those teams, almost like Chicago, where there's going to be a high turnover all the time for the next couple yeah. of years. Yeah. We're just going to Every, just keep going and evolving until we get to that next step. Yeah, just cycle the cycle the, the guys around the core. I agree. 100%. All right, moving on to the North Division. First, before I ask you about the North Division, I want to know your thoughts on the North Division. I am so excited. I cannot wait to watch this. It is going to be a shit show every night. I think there's going to be a lot of hatred. There's going to be a lot of goal scoring. There's going to be new rivalries. I am so excited as a one year one off. Absolutely. I mean, if it has to happen, if, if COVID makes this go on for a couple more or however long, I don't hope, but I'm okay with it. I want it to go back to normal. I want to play Boston. I want to play Buffalo. I want to see Sidney Crosby, Ovi, but I am excited that we are going to have an all Canadian and it, the ratings are going to be through the roof and I can't wait. Yeah. I have to agree with you too. Just to add my, my two cents onto that point. I don't miss seeing Crosby and Ovechkin. We've seen him for like 12 years. We're good, but how about McDavid 10 times a year? Yes. That's impressive. You know, I, I was just killing some time before we hit record and I was watching the, the TSN top 10 plays from last season and McDavid where he broke Morgan right. Bradley's ankles. Yeah. yeah. Like all the that time. play, um, I had forgot about that. I'm like, yeah, whatever. It wasn't even that good. I think I could do that in rollerblades. And then when I watched it, I was like, oh my god, that play was as crazy as I remember it. Um, so McDavid ten times or whatever it is this season uh, over Crosby and Ovechkin, I'll take that this season. I think I hope that we actually have a North Division next year. And if I may, I really think the Canadian government should step in and say, like, hey, we want to honor the Canadian division by awarding the Tim Hortons Canadian Shield and whatever top Canadian team, which will be the Leafs this year, obviously, gets the first ever Tim Hortons Cup. Tim Hortons Cup. That's actually what it should be called. Yeah, the double-double. The double-double. The yeah. double-double. Yeah. Double. It's a double-ended cup. Anyways, whatever. Okay, hey, they, so gave a card, they gave a card to Phil Kessel at the All-Star Game, so why not? He was picked last, and yeah. who could blame him? Yeah. All right. So your thoughts on the, on the North Division said, what about how the division may fall? I am going to be an optimist. I have the Leafs going first. So, so does everybody else. So yeah. does everybody, except for Aaron Chalupa. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that guy has no Western bias at all. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to what? Oh, say it. No, I, no, I a, I agree. But B, two number two. I also think that I there's a poll. They were the they rated twenty GM. Sorry, twenty GM scouts and people around the league. Leafs ranked number one in everybody's scorebook. I'm a fan of that. Yeah. So, I, I, man, that, that almost makes me just like not want, like, as a Leaf fan, I can't take any kind of optimism like that because it's going to just blow it for us. But the list I'm trying to remember that I gave you for our division last night Toronto first, I had Calgary second, Edmonton third, Winnipeg fourth, Vancouver, Montreal, and then Ottawa last. Yeah, I like it. I, I feel good about that too. I, I have at least one Oilers two, and you know that what? may flip flop. I, you know, the, the thing about the Oilers that always get me is goaltending, and they even lost a goalie in the waivers. So, which is crazy to think. Clefbaum's gone. Clef Clef that was crazy too, right? So yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I I like the Markstrom signing for Calgary. If Giordano, if Johnny Ham and Cheese, Johnny Gaudreau has another like he lights it up this season. I that's why I have Calgary going second. I think they could be really strong this year. Yeah, I and as I said yesterday, like I, I really feel like Vancouver's going to shock some people and yeah. really bring it. I think they did something in goaltending that was pretty spectacular, where they lost. Uh, I'm going to say a B plus goaltender, and they gained an A A minus goaltender, uh, as well as having a bright prospect in Demko, um, if not ready to take the lead on the doorstep. So I think that they have something very special that maybe can only be rivaled by. Maybe Winnipeg in net and and definitely Montreal in net, which is elite goaltending. So I think that they have uh, the, uh, a good balance of young players and they have a good balance of great goaltending and they have a pretty decent defensive core. 
So I feel like they can do something. They'll do some damage. Um, and then I have Calgary, Calgary, and then um, Winnipeg. Sorry, Calgary, Montreal, Wienerpeg, and then the Ottawa Shitters. <laughs> yeah, I flip flopped between Vancouver and Winnipeg actually for what you just said about the goaltending. I mean, Demko is still their future goaltender, and you bring in a guy like Holtby. Yeah, he's in his thirties, but he's a Cup winner, and he played so great on that Washington team. He would have been a Team Ga- Canada goaltender if we had gone to the Olympics last time. So, yeah. I mean, you you can't doubt that. I actually, oh, I have them and Winnipeg going back and forth, but. It, I see them fighting. It, it's going to be close, the whole division. I don't think it's going to be as widespread, usually, as some divisions are. I think it's going to be close from top to bottom, and they're going to be fighting for that last spot. Yeah, okay. I think you're right. Yeah. I think I think you got one and two are going to be, are going to probably be four or five points ahead of three, four, five, and then six and seven just battling for the bottom. So I think it's going to be a pretty impressive division. And if I look at other divisions in the league, I really only think – for competition, strictly competition, star power, all that stuff. Excuse me. Only get like um, I can only see the Metro or the East, whatever they're calling it, as a comparable to how intense this division will be. This is going to be the one of the most intense divisions. This Canadian one. Uh, there is going to be, like I said at the beginning, a lot of rivalries, a lot of heat. We brought it up last night too when we were recording. We were talking about Winnipeg. And how we like they're just going to be that team that's kind of like Minnesota Wild, just in the middle, always making the playoffs. You brought up Paul Maurice, not only that, but Connor Halbuck, who you've mentioned, who's one of the best goaltenders in the world, really, and would be the Team USA starter. And then you got Mark Shifley, Blake Wheeler, Paul Statsny, which I'm starting to agree with more with you. It's kind of a weird signing, but that lends credence to the fact that they're going to be a middle of the pack, just make the playoff, just miss out, win a round, win two rounds. Yeah, I think you're. I, I think they're a team that that will be pretty streaky as well. I think they're going to get. They're going to go on a run where they win four or five games in a row, and then they'll go on a, a run where they lose three, win one, lose two, win one. I, I think they're going to be, you know, maybe like a, a six fifty kind of winning percentage team. I don't think they're going to be. Um, I don't think they're going to be a tier one team. I think they're going to. And the thing, the thing that kind of weirds weirds me out the most is I don't know how the playoffs are going to lay out, but if they finish three or four, well. Who do you think number one's gonna be playing? Yeah. Like so. Anyways, I, I think you're right. I, I I said yesterday that Paul Maurice, I believe, is becoming one of those goalies that's a little bit dated. Uh, sorry, one of those coaches that is a little bit more dated. Um, I just don't know if his style of the the kind of hockey he plays is gonna translate enough in this division where you got a guy like Connor McDavid with breaking ankles. You got a guy like Mitch Marner. Uh, you know, guys with speed that can move. And I don't know if if he's going to present a, a formation of hockey that's going to be able to counter that well enough. Who knows? I, I mean, I obviously don't know, but I just feel like he's 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 been a starting, he's been a head coach in the league more on than off for like twenty years. Who knows if the evolution is there for him? So I so who knows what happens with Wienerpeg? But I wish him the best, but not that much. <laughs> okay, so I have a question for you that we actually didn't ask last night. Who do you think before the season is going to be Toronto's biggest rival in this division? Who are we going to, it's going to be the hard fight. We're gonna... in, in my mind, it has to be Edmonton, even Edmonton. though it, if, yeah, if you look, if you look at the last little bit, Toronto's kind of owned Edmonton the last four or five seasons. You know, I, I think they went two or three seasons without losing a game to Edmonton, even though they only play twice a year. But it, I think Ottawa only has, or sorry, Edmonton only has one win. I think to look for something a little bit more rich. I hate Toronto Winnipeg matchups. I hate it. I hate I hate Winnipeg fans. So I think that there's a little rivalry brewing there. And who knows the Liney Matthew thing always kind of rekindles something. And then of course Montreal. I, I, Montreal always has something to prove. You look at was it uh, the end of last season where Toronto Montreal had that that barn burner of a game where Toronto gave up like four consecutive goals and then Montreal won in overtime with that their hot rookie who who won in the shootout or whatever it was. Uh, I think that's always going to be a rivalry for Toronto and I think it's going to be something that uh, Leaf fans have to be aware that Montreal is going to get up for that game. So, Yeah, Montreal got a lot tougher. I think it's going to be between Montreal and Calgary. I just think they're, they're both very hard teams to play against and I like to cheer for Calgary as kind of my Western team when the Leafs were out of the playoffs just because girlfriend has family over there and I've been over there several times. But 
they can piss you off when they play them. They play dirty sometimes. Kachuk, Giordano. Kachuk, yeah. I, I like that type of hockey when I'm not playing against them. But when we are, they can fuck off. So I think that's going to lend. It's going to be some tough games. But I almost want to agree with you because McDavid versus Matthews is just going to be so nasty. Yeah, I think it's going to be fun. I mean, like let, let's not just say McDavid Matthews. Let's say Marner Mark Dreisaitl Dreis- Dreis- or Tavares Dreisaitl. Like whoever, like this, both yeah. teams have firepower and that's something to be excited about. We, we might not have three, two games. We might have six, five games or whatever the case is, but oh, yeah. I like it. Let me move on to something that I brought up yesterday that I'm not as heated today about because obviously I've cooled <laughs> down in the 24 hours. Okay. But <laughs> Toronto, I always feel like someone's trying to fuck Toronto in the ass. No lube. I, it makes me crazy because oh, yeah. we all know Ottawa is going to be shit. Yeah, they're going to win like 20 or 30 games. We all know they're going to be shit, though. Do you think Toronto gets a shake of being like, hey, it's only four or five hours away? You guys are close enough. Let's give you the 10 games instead of whatever. They play Ottawa the least amount uh, uh, of any other team. It doesn't make enough sense to me. Why? It, why, yeah. why can't we get a shitty team one extra game and not leave fucking Vancouver or Edmonton out west? That doesn't make any sense. It makes absolutely no sense. We should be playing the most games against Montreal and Ottawa. And Vancouver, Calgary, and Edmonton should be playing the most games against each other. Nobody cares about Winnipeg, so it's whatever. They, and they can swing both ways, so it doesn't matter. Exactly. They always swing both ways in Winnipeg. Uh, so, you know, I, Toronto should absolutely be... I, I don't care that Ottawa shit. What that means is easy points for us if they're that bad. And I don't exactly. even think they're that bad. I think they're, we're going to have to worry about them a bit. I think it's going to be close. But yeah, I they'll be a hungry them. team for sure. Yeah. I mean, the one thing you have to remember that's scary is that Ottawa is going to have home ice advantage because they're used to having no fans, right? So it's going to be very <laughs> playing in the <laughs> Well done. Well, suck it, Ottawa. Suck it, Ottawa. Fuck you guys. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, yeah. This team is against the cap. Not only that, you guys, you got guys signing sweetheart deals just to be here. My question to you is, can this team make trades? I am, I am going to say no. Right now, it's hard. I'm almost going to agree with what you were saying before. And we looked at it, and I have the notes here, and I was looking at the contracts. I mean, really, the only guys, Kerfoot, three years left, Riley, two years left, but you don't want to trade Riley. He's our best defenseman. Hall and Mikheyev, Hall, three years, Mikheyev, two years. So not a lot of guys with multiple years. We have the first and second round pick this draft. We don't have our third. And what's the point of getting rid when we just said we have we lack goaltending depth, uh, some more pro like I, I don't see where they're going to trade off assets to improve this team and, and make it better for what we send off. I think they've done all the moves they wanted. They brought in Jumbo Joe, who I think was a huge piece they wanted for some reason with management. I like Jumbo Joe. I hope it works out. Wayne Simmons, they brought in the two goaltenders. They're getting ready for the Vegas expansion draft. And I think with this roster right now, there's going to be a player that you know, like Hutchinson will be taken, or, or at worst, maybe Travis Dermott. Like, so yeah. I, I don't see it. You? You know, you said Mikheyev. I think Mikheyev is, he just signed a very team-friendly deal. Yeah. I can't see them being like, thank you for taking an uh, obvious undercut of what your market value is worth. For sure, now we're going to trade you to wh- whoever, whoever is a bottom feeder. We're going to send you to Arizona. LA. Good luck. Yeah. Like, LA, well. yeah. Like, you know, I, I can't, I'm, I mean, unless they're offering them, something but I, I can't imagine what that is Kerfoot seems to be always that guy that they're like oh he's making a little bit more money than he probably should he's got a contract that can move um so I mean if that's the case I mean he he hasn't impressed me since he got here so you know maybe he's an odd man out if if there is but I mean who's going to be looking for a third or possibly second line center who makes too much money yeah. like it doesn't make any sense to me like New Jersey like this New Jersey like New Jersey might not even beyond the the minimum of of the cap so you know i I just can't see them making any deals unless it was a deal they they couldn't say no to but again what are you bringing in the only thing i can imagine you bringing in is an upgrading goaltending or uh, you know a a guy who's on his last leg who wants that last run but then they already have two or three of those guys already so I, i can't see that making any sense yeah and what you were saying before that just brought up in my head too so what you trade kerfoot and what are you going to get? Who? Okay, what's next? Who's our third center? 
Thornton, yeah. Spezza, or you're going to trade Kerfoot, our third C, for another third C? Because Tavares and Matthews aren't going down. They are our one and two. I can't imagine. So, so unless they're trading them for maybe a top six winger with the same type of contract, and I'm trying to think of like a guy who that could be, but but you're right. like It doesn't really make sense. Like This is their team that they've chosen. Yeah. And if if you're going to fast forward Robertson Robertson to yeah. the big club, like jump right from the O to the big club, can't play then, junior. Yeah, yeah. So what? So you're gonna you're gonna stun his growth in hopes that whoever this ex winger might be is gonna push you over the edge. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So my answer to the question is no. I don't think this team can make any trades. And at the end of the day, why would you? Everyone's got them winning the North. Yeah. So we got the same opinion here. I don't see it. I mean, two Leaf fans having the same opinion. Imagine that. Uh, unbelievable. Take a drink for that. Exactly. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so moving on, uh, Jesse, we know that Tavares wears the C, but are there some real leaders on this team? Well, besides the guys they brought in that are supposed to bring leadership, Thorne, because we'll wait and see. Uh, I'm trying to think about it. <clears throat> I did say Matthews was one of the guys I said, but but I'm starting to agree more with what You'll say again about that, but but obviously, uh, I think Spezza, I think Muzzin, Muzzin's a leader, and from what I've heard, Riley's a leader in that room as well. Yeah, I, I agree with those names that you said too. Um, what really gets me on, on a guy like Matthews is we all know he has the talent, he's got the size. Um, even just like following his Instagram this, this offseason, just seeing the the kind of more adult body that he has now. I mean, that sounds kind of weird to say. But this is a guy we've watched since he was 18 years old. Uh, fast forward five years into the future, he's got more. He's filled out a little bit more, so I'm excited to see what he brings. Yeah. And you, you know, not not to not to ask TSN's D anymore, but Craig Button did a really good thing on how like this year is the year that Matthews makes his team his team, which kind of throws me for a loop. Yeah, he's an offensive star. Yeah, he's a, he's that kind of guy that brings a little flash to the pan, and I'm all for that. But is like he only occasionally wears an A, right? Or he he's an alternative captain. JTO is the man in the city. So why not? Like, why is he not more of that focus? Maybe because I don't know, he's got 10 years on, on Matthews. I don't know what the case is, but I was just kind of shocked by that. But I do like the fact that this should, this should be the year for Matthews to be a, a, a 1.20 point a game player. This year, it should be it. He, he's been flirting with that number for a little bit. They showed some great stats on how his rookie year, 0. 0.87 points per game, moving up like 1.1, 1. 1.14, uh, 1.19. This is a year, 1.2 a game. Let's do it. Let's go, baby. Because you know where I'm going to go when we do our bold predictions. I know. So I, can't, I, know. <laughs> I can't bust that nut right now. But what I'm trying to say is yeah. I think this is a year where he turns the Jets on. And really becomes the offensive force we all know he is. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. I think he's just going to go nuts this year. I actually think, though, that he was going to be, before they brought in Tavares, he was the choice for the future captain. And then that whole arrest controversy, like the pulling the pants down or whatever, showing his ass to that chick, all that stuff right. happened. And the media, typical Toronto, just latched on. I think that, combined with bringing Tavares in, Mike Babcock, Tavares was his guy to choose as the captain. So... That I not not I don't know where exactly I was going with that, but really what I'm saying is there was a real chance that Matthews was going to get the C. So I think that he does have the leadership. Maybe he hasn't shown it yet, but he should, and he's supposed to. Maybe he's a quiet leader like Matt Sundin, yeah. but you know what? he's going to light it up this year. He it will he will make it his team. He has that new trainer, the guy who trained Patty Kane. So. Oh yeah, that's cool. I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> okay, so. We looked at like who are the leaders of the locker room, but let's flip the switch and talk about who, like who are some of the guys that maybe like the snakes in the locker room, like some of the guys who may be like rolling their eyes while Keefe is like freaking out and going like tomato red. Like who do you think is some of the guys rolling their eyes? <clears throat> yeah, I, you know it, it's tough. I want to say because they've underperformed that you know the obvious choices are guys like Marner and Willie. Mm -hmm. But frog in my throat, cheese. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Go ahead, Nicole. Cool. You talk first. Yeah. You know, I, I we talked about this already. So, it, you know, not to, not to beat a dead horse, but I think those, I think for sure Marner's one of those guys that he might be, he might be chewing his gum a little too loud. And Nylander might be one of those guys. Like, I just, I feel like he he's the type of guy 
that always has the answers, but he's always talking shit, so you can never trust what he says. But like every now and then he's right, and they never let you forget it. And he just seems one of those slimy guys to me, and I just don't, I just don't love the the characteristics of him. Although if he does a pretty dangle and Nets want to win a game, who do you think his number one fan's going to be? Oh, 100%. this guy, right? Yeah, 100%. this guy right here. Yeah, so. I think I think it's uh, <laughs> you want me to sound like an old head and just generalize an entire generation, but it's like this, it's this like you know arrogant, just like sarcastic know-it-all my younger brother is part of this generation you can't tell them shit so that's right they just know every answer and i'm sure people older than us are saying the same thing about me so that's yeah, of course that's fair but i Isn't just think that the case not, yeah so i think there's like that attitude maybe guys willy but i think really what it is and I, I it sucks to say and i hope it changes and it can change because that's part of maturing and getting older I just think there are some like mentally soft guys on the team. I think that's the issue. I think there are guys, and maybe it is a Willie or, or a Dermot or Marner, these guys who seem to hide for a couple of games when things go wrong, where maybe they just don't like being yelled at by the coach and they've never been yelled at by their parents, or they get down on themselves and it feels like the whole world's on the shoulder because now everybody has anxiety, right? So I yeah. think it's something like that. I think... You know, they've like they've you've heard how many years the Leafs have brought in psychological sports experts and this guy, a, a team psychiatrist, and they have such and such and go on. And uh, so I think it, it's going to, imp- I mean, you have to hope mature wisdom, just bringing guys like Joe Thornton, that's going to help out. But I think that's what the real issue, not not so much character, just mentally soft. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I think it's also, it's a couple of things too, you know, those guys who have only been like two or three years. Plus, guys like Marner who have been dangling people or dazzling people for years, you know, they may be it may not be in their in their DNA to take criticism well, and mm-hmm. they might shut off for a couple of games. And, and I mean, that if that's the case, that's that is what it is. But I'm I'm curious to see if those guys who we perceive as maybe snakes or slimy dudes, if they make that jump and they actually become like these studs, uh, um, not studs, um, like these stand up model players you know yeah everybody listening knows someone whether it's sports work whatever but that person who just relies on natural talent doesn't work at it and gets by just on pure natural talent alone that's what happens to a lot of these guys they're like phil kessel yeah and you're told your whole life you're covered with yes men it's just everybody's yes. telling you how great you are and stroking you off constantly in college university it's just a circle yeah now, i can't agree more yeah now you're on your own there's pressure and you can't just do that there there has to be other aspects to your game and some guys fold under the pressure you're right i you know i i really hope we're wrong but if we're not we called it here first thank you for listening all right <laughs> let's talk about that that sexy... and they're gonna win <laughs> yeah and they're gonna win um let's talk about that sexy den denmarkian what what do you call someone from denmark danish dane yeah that... dane. yeah you're right the dane let's talk about <laughs> that sexy red-headed dane freddie anderson Ooh. um you know this is a contract here we, we i mean i it feels so weird to be talking about this again seeing that we just talked about it but do do you see like there is rumors that the 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 lease management and Freddie's agents have been talking, which is great news, but very entry level uh, negotiations, if you want to call it that. Do you see him in the future? What do you see? What do you predict for for Will for sorry for Freddie? So I'm going to say I hope he comes back because it doesn't matter if I'm talking to you. Say let's just pretend you're lease management or pretend you're Freddie and his agent. It doesn't matter who, what's the best option going into next year, Toronto, whether you hate the Leafs or not, they are contenders with the team we built. We may not perform like it and we haven't yet. And maybe that changes with a better goaltender or if Freddie steps up. But if you're Freddie at your age going into this contract, why would you not resign with the Leafs and the Leafs? Why would you try your hardest not to make it work with Freddie? We just spoke about it about 15 minutes ago or whenever. Dell, Hutchinson, Jack Campbell, is that your starter for next year to win the cup? I don't think so. So then we have to bring someone in because we have no one in the pipe. So I, I think it has to be Freddie, and Freddie's going to be asking for 6 to $7 million. I, I hope he, you know, 
you want him to take a team discount, but how many guys do? And he's not. You know, you, you we look at the at the comparables, and Markstrom's the closest comparable, same age, very similar numbers. Uh, let's say like B plus caliber player, B B plus caliber player. You know, six and a half over six years. You look at Braden Holpe, who I wouldn't say his numbers are that far away, but he's got the ring, he's got the cup, so uh, it's hard to say that maybe he deserves this $8.6 million a season on a two-year deal. Do the Leafs maybe make something happen with Vancouver, if possible? Maybe to, to get Hopi for maybe an, uh, for maybe get him for one more year. If, if Hopi's only in Vancouver for one season... Then they dump him or they dump him with some of the contract. They hold some of the cash or whatever it is. If that's the case, I'm very curious to see what happens in this in this scenario. That I just threw that out. I mean, there's, there's, no, there's no fire to that smoke. I just put that out there just because it popped into my head. Hey, maybe Hopi isn't a long-term fit in Vancouver. Maybe they dump him after this season. They take care of some of that cash. If they took, if he's making 8.6, if they, if they took $2.6 million off the plate, of the Toronto Maple Leafs in, in a deal where they sent him plus maybe whatever for maybe whatever in a draft pick. That's not a bad scenario to be in, I think. For the, I mean, it all depends on Hopi's season this this season. But I'm kind of curious to see what the Leafs do if they get ultra creative or if Freddie just takes that discount. But even if he takes a discount, he's at five right now. The, cap, the Leafs are at the cap. What are we talking? 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, 6.5? Even six and a half on a two-year or three-year deal, that's not even that's not even market value for a guy like that. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the, the deal is here. I don't know what the play is here for the Leafs. I just hope that maybe they can make a one or two-year deal, bridge deal kind of thing to kind of just get him uh, in the keep him in the fold to keep that win window a little bit open a little bit longer. Yeah, I, I would love to see them sign him on a bridge deal. And I think that's probably the best you're going to get is one, two, maybe three years. Um, my bigger issue is the following year is Morgan Riley's contracts up. And that's more where my head's at because that's the biggest piece we need to sign. And and what you're saying about Brayton Holt being that deal. I mean, you really think about it. You can do that. Let's give it to LA with Jonathan quick. Let's take Mark Andre Fleury off Vegas's hands. I mean, there's a number of veterans that we could take a chance at. And I don't know if, I, I definitely don't see that as a better option than Freddie at his age. I mean, if anything, I'd be, you know, trying to go the Pittsburgh route more than anything and try to find a younger goalie, try to find some little diamond. But I, it's so tough because Freddie, I think Freddie, if there's a team and COVID's kind of fucked everybody up, that's another thing we don't take into account with contract talks. Everybody had to take a cut this year. That's Not to right. say I hope, I hope that goes into it, but I kind of hope it goes into it. Except for Petro Angelo, who <laughs> yeah. didn't take a pay cut at all, who said, give me all the money and trade other guys away. Yeah, and they still have Laner and Flurry. I don't even understand what that team's doing, that management. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I, I hope they sign Freddie. There, there's really no other options right now for the Leafs. I mean, there are options, but I don't see it at the same caliber as Freddie. But we've got him, Mo. I, I love Anderson in that for the Leafs. I hope that there's some way to keep him in there. If not, I completely understand. But this would be one of those super rare occasions where the Leafs would say goodbye to a goaltender somewhat prime, like in prime. I wouldn't say he's out of his, he's far from out of his prime, but I think he's probably got three or four more prime seasons in him. So this, I think, would be the first time you would actually see a goalie leaving his prime from Toronto. I mean, Pop Van technically was in his prime when he left, but he was nowhere where he was close to when he broke out as a rookie. And speaking about veteran goalies, let's not forget Eddie the Eagle, Mr. Balfour himself. Everyone thought he's washed up and then had killer seasons in Toronto. Oh, I love Eddie here. So I, you know, and he, and he came out of left field because he already had Cujo. It didn't make any sense at the time. Retrospectively, it was the right call to make. Yeah, so the, I want Freddie to stay, and I I like Freddie. I mean, again, if we don't win a playoff series this round, and he kind of shits the bed in the playoffs, I might have a totally different tune in a later episode with you. Yeah, I'm gonna tell him to get the hell out. But he he he's not good in a game seven against Boston. We we we've seen that already, or a game six against Washington. Yeah. But um, what's a better what's yeah. a team with a better setup? I mean, he's not going to go anywhere that has the type of salary cap and 
the same level of play that the Leafs are going to have. And and at that point, too, I think any goalie free agent or any goalie with a contract coming up is going to want to play for the Leafs and want that position. I think you're right. I think when, when everything gets down, down to the brass tacks, we talked about it yesterday. I, I feel, I just feel like repeating myself is just so monotony. Like, it's just not for me. But we look at, like, possibilities out there. You're either going to sign big money for a team that is probably three or four years away, and who knows where you're going to be in three or four years, or you stick it out in Toronto, or you hope that there might be a contender who might want you. Maybe Pittsburgh wants you. Maybe, like, Philly's not going to want you. They got kind of hot. Like, there's, there, there's, too much, there's too much out there already. Do you sign a, a sweetheart deal, hometown discount, and make it work with the Leafs? Or do you like, you know what? I'm about that cash. Give me that money. Let's make it rain. I'm going to go sign with Los Angeles and I'll live in LA and the weather's going to be great. I'll hang out with Justin Bieber because we're homies and I'll make $8.6 million a year or whatever the case is. I, I, I don't know. Like the market I, is probably 6.5, but even 6.5 is a lot. You, you can go to Matthews, Marner, and be like, listen, boys, I need you both to take 750K knock off your, your contract. And then, like, who else do you go to? Because there's nobody else making coin. Like, you're not going to go to your brand new defense stud defenseman that you just signed, uh, and uh, and ask um, Brett. No, fuck, I keep calling him Brennan. TJ Brody. TJ Brody. You're not going to ask TJ Brody to take a pay cut. He just signed here, so that's not going to happen. But you maybe go to Matthews Marner, uh, maybe Tavares, and be like, "Listen, boys, can you take a hit of 750k so we can keep Freddie around for another season?" Yeah. So. And not only that, but if Freddie leaves, that means that we probably lost the playoffs again. So what are you going to do? You're going to go ask for eight to nine million and be like, hey, I spent sit five years on the Toronto Police with that team with Matthews Marner, and I couldn't take him anywhere, but I'd like eight to nine million, you know, paying me first. So I don't see that yeah. happen. So, so it being his best interest, and, and also if we go far in the playoffs or we do well this year, everybody's going to be calling on management to sign Freddie, like lock yeah. this guy up. It's going to be yeah. a whole different ballpark for him. He's going to have all the advantage in the world. So we'll and, see how it goes. We touched on it on the, the podcast that won't be heard as well as earlier in this podcast. Who do you really have to say bye to if Freddie goes? Hyman, Kerfoot. Like if you can get if you can get something for Kerfoot, but we already addressed that. If you get something for Kerfoot, you save four million bucks. That's great money to save. But then what, what happens? Do you slide Jason Spezza or Jumble Joe there? Who knows? And then if that's the case, how much does that hinder this team? Kerfoot. What does he really bring? He brings speed, energy. He's a guy that can hit. He's a guy that can score. He brings a lot to the table. Maybe not four million dollars worth in a twenty, like a post-COVID world, but he's still a valuable piece of the puzzle. Yes, they're paying too much for him, but whatever. He's still better than anything else they're going to put in there. Yes, he's better than Joe Thornton. Yes, he's better than Jason Spezza in a third-line center role. Yes, yes, he is. Well, unfortunately, Leaf fans, myself included, won't want to hear this, but teams are probably just not even going to take her off us. We're going to have to lose Hyman or Hikea, like somebody. Yes. And what's the point of losing that? Someone is juicier. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. So unless it's for a future starting goaltender that has years and we can sign to a contract, then there's no point in Freddie just you need to try and resign here because we've signed the big guys to the big contracts and these are the cards we're dealt as Leaf fans for the years going forward. Jesse, it's that time in the podcast for some <laughs> bold ass predictions. Let's oh. go, baby. Woo. All right, Jesse. I asked you yesterday. I'm going to ask you the exact same question. I already have the answers written down on my iPad. What are the Leafs going to do this year in regards to a team record? 56 and 0. The juggernaut. <laughs> <Have it written. laughs> no, so. Um, like I told you yesterday, I have a bunch of records scratched out. I was going back and forth, and I've decided to do a non-Leaf fan way and go a bit conservative. I have them winning first in the division with a record of 33 wins, 18 losses, 5 draws. I like it. Or not draws. I'm talking old school when I say draws. I don't. I, <laughs> I, I, speak, I speak it. I speak it. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> I, I have the Leafs going... Now, like I like that. That sounds really good. It's very tempting to be to 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 be in that same boat, yeah. but um, I'm gonna get a little bit crazier with it and say the Leafs are gonna win 38 games this season. Uh -huh. Sounds crazy, but baby, I bleed blue and white, and I don't care if I'm wrong. I'm saying that now it's gonna happen. This Allie. is what it is. 38 games, win the North, be the king of the North, 
Um, 15 losses, three ties. Um, I don't know, do that math. 38 plus three points. So it is what it is. I'm on board for that. I think the Leafs are, are they're just going to be, they're going to be fire. They're going to be fire. You don't mess with fire. You're going to get burned. That's it, baby. Yeah. It's uh, so you're, you're close to like what? 79, 78 points. I'm around 71. So we're both, they're in yeah, the 76, 70, 8, 9, 10. Yeah. Yeah. So 79 so points. Yeah. So they're going to definitely finish first. I think it's going to be a bit closer. Uh, the whole division is going to be a bit more compressed than what you're saying, but I love it. I hope that you're right. Thank I'm, you, man. <laughs> All right. Most goals. Uh, I'll go first with this. Now, yes. my very bold prediction That's is number 34. Goes home with five oh baby. Let's Whoa. go, baby. I got Matthews lighting the lamp all wow. day, all night, four times a week, baby. This guy, I called it, man. Listen, you do the math. 56 games at 1.2 goals a game. You tell me what that adds up to be. I'll tell you what it is. 50 fucking goals, baby. Let's go. Double hockey stick boner. Let's go, baby. That is the best bold prediction you have ever given on this show. The Thanks, best. baby. Thanks. The greatest. I I <laughs> love that you did that because I thought I was going to go nuts and I was going to blow your mind because I've got Austin Matthews with 40 goals leading the team in goals. And I thought that was pretty solid. But I'm like in the 50 number. And you're on a roll today. Thank you, man. I th- you know, I'm really feeling it. Second time's a charm. I don't care what anyone says. All right. Let's talk points overall. Um, you know, we went. We we talked about this yesterday. I was kind of shocked. With, I'm going to preference it by saying I was shocked with who you picked. Not because it's a, a crazy bold prediction. It's a it's a smart, great prediction. But overall, I felt like my prediction was better. Go ahead, tell the people <laughs> what you got. Oh, you son of a bitch! You set me up yep. like that. Okay. You're so the way I did it, and I'll say it how I did yesterday. I chose the top four, and I broke down their points. So I'll go four, three, two, one. So for fourth, I had Nylander around 50 points, 25 goals, 25 assists. Third on the team, I had Tavares at 60 points. We're looking at, I thought, around 27 goals, 33 assists. Second, obviously, Marner. You're looking at 60 to 65 points. I'm thinking 20, 25 goals and about 40 assists, and he's probably going to lead the team in assists. That's what I have for Marner, by the way. Mm -hmm. And, and of course, number one, I have Austin Matthews, 40 goals, 30 assists for a 70-point season. Listen, I I don't – it's not that I hate that. I like that a lot, and you know what? You're probably going to be right. But here's how I see it. Last two seasons, (laughs) number 16 (laughs) has been the, the, the team's top point getter. I can't see that changing this year. He's got uh, first line duties. He's got power play and power kill duties. The guy's going to be on the ice a lot. He's going to be on the ice as much or more than Freddie Anderson. The guy's going to be racking up points. His plus minus is going to be whacked, but he's going to get points. I can't see that changing this season, especially like if Matthew's getting 40 goal or 50 goals, Martin's getting at least 50 assists. Like, <laughs> It's not, it's, it's not outside the realm. And if he nets 16 goals, I see it happening. I see it happening. Marner points. I have him at 75 points. Uh, Mitch Marner, number 16 in your programs, number one when it comes to points, baby. Let's go. Yeah, so I love that prediction. I, I can't even disagree. I mean, we're two Leaf fans trying to pump our players' tires. So I can't argue. The reason for Matthews going one for me is I think he's going to set up... Nylander's going to have a great season, like I said, at least 25 goals. I think Matthews is a big part of that, setting him up. And not only that, just the amount of secondary assist Matthews is going to get taking the face-off for power play and penalty kill, just normal face-off time. I mean, I think he's going to be 20 to 25 minutes probably this season. So with secondary assist, that's why I see Matthews leading at 70 points. Fair enough. I can't take that away from you. I think it's a great prediction. You never um, we'll just have to we'll have to wait and see. We'll we'll give it three and a half months to see what happens, and then at the end, when it's all said and done, we'll we'll play a little friendly wager. I don't know. Maybe we'll do like a head shave thing. Maybe we'll do a double up shot. Maybe your Texan roughnecks from the XFL and my St. Louis Battlehawks of the XFL will have to finish this for us. I don't know just yet, mm-hmm. but we'll set up a wager. Who knows? Mm-hmm. With that being said, Ba. You got anything else? You got any other hot mama walk takes? Um, mama walks is calling this season the season of the juggernaut. 
And that 56 and O leaf comment I made that that was a joke between us. That's not a joke for her. <laughs> this is the year that the Leafs win it all. She has, and she's been loving the Buffalo Bills run. So that team that's blue and white, you know what I mean? Winning. Mm. That's just kind of pumped the tires a bit. So we're going full steam. So I'm sorry to every other team, but this is the Leafs year, according to mama walks and, uh, Mike Babcock, <laughs> who deserved an analyst role, apparently. I don't really get that. <laughs> NBC, baby. Him and Pierre yeah. McGuire. Instead of Milbury, let's go with Babcock. I mean, he's just on a PR tour, right? That's what I'll this... take that any day. Yeah. Those are the takes. All right. Um, well, the, the season starts. You guys are going to get this Wednesday morning, the start of the NHL season. This is your primer, baby. Let's Enjoy. Go. Ball Walker, where can the people find you on the network? Oh, we've got a lot going on this year. So uh, we're doing Wow, I Had Mustard. We've got an episode coming out later this month. Not only that, we've got Nothing But Miss, episode two, the basketball show I do with Melky. We've got that episode coming out later this week. I'm excited. And spoiler alert, maybe we're talking about the Raptors playing like shit. Maybe. Woo! (laughs) Maybe. And then third, a nice little treat. I've been speaking with our favorite, John DeNoir. And we're going to be doing... A nobody gives a fuck special edition of Bumbling Canucks. We're bringing it back. We're gonna have a blast. Me and him. Ooh, maybe some Star Wars talk. Yeah, maybe I don't know. We'll the see. man with a soft velvety re- voice return. Is he still? Is he back from out west? He's out west. He's doing still. a little lockdown out west. Yeah. Good for him. Good for him. Yeah, I'm excited. Well, you guys can find us on Instagram, Not to Three Podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, what's up? Let us know if this is any good. The YouTube thing for us is still kind of half and half. We don't know if we're going to be there, but we're putting stuff up there and it's getting a little bit of retention. So if you're liking this, give us a thumbs up. Smash that subscribe. I've always wanted to say that. Smash yeah. that subscribe button. Um, yeah, man, we're like, we're trying to new stuff. Go Leafs, go. Ba, send us home, baby. Let's go, boys. Go Leafs, go. Go Leafs, go. Go Leafs, go. Go Leafs, go. Go. Leafs, go. 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 Leafs, go. go. <laughs> Fuck me, right? <laughs>